Hello there, YouTube. So I wanted to make a quick video today to talk a little bit about a new tool uh, called ChatGPT. Now, I really think that this is gonna be a transformative tool. It's, it's really kind of gone viral uh, since it was released last week. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about you know, why I think it's valuable and also show you how to use it. Uh, so real quick, some context, what exactly is ChatGPT? So ChatGPT is a, uh, an AI chatbot uh, that has been created by the company called OpenAI. OpenAI is an AI research and development company that was founded in 2015. And since then, they've come out with various different tools. Um, one of the most popular has been a, a system called Dolly, D-A-L-L-E, which is uh, an AI generative um, image tool. So you can go in and, you know, it's based on text input. So you can type in a sentence that says, um, create an image of a monkey riding a horse on the moon, and then the AI will create an image based on that. So there, there are two things to note here, the first of which is GPT. So what exactly is GPT? Well, that stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much depth about what that is. The important thing for this video is that there are different versions of GPT, you know, much like software versions, uh, you know, you have Windows um, 8 and 10, etc. cetera. Uh, GPT is currently, or at least chat GPT is currently based on GPT 3.5. And GPT 4.0 is slated to be released next year in 2023. Uh, so then the other thing here is NLP, uh, which stands for Natural Language Processing. Um, and so what NLP is and, and NLP trained systems, um, basically you feed in data uh, or text to this AI system and it will learn based on that. And the important thing is that this AI system um, that, that's trained on NLP models is able to understand context. So a difference here between Google and you know, uh, ChatGPT, for example, is that Google will, um, will provide you search results based on text matching. So there are algorithms whenever you search for something in Google that will provide you results based on the highest um, matching scores based on your input. Whereas ChatGPT can actually understand some of the context and the nuance of what it is that you're asking. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. But, um, you know, why, why is this significant? Why is this valuable? And, and who should really care? So I think, uh, you know, over the next months and, and years, there's going to be a lot of progress in this space. Um, I am I'm very, very excited about this, and I am by no means an AI expert, but I think that this is, is broadly applicable to, to many industries and to many people. Um, so first and foremost, I think, you know, I see the most impact uh, on, on the knowledge work industry. So if you are a student, an engineer, business analyst, reporter, academic, author, you know, scripts, blog posts, screenplays, etc., customer service representative, any one of these things, you will probably find this uh, to be a very valuable tool uh, in, in your day-to-day -day, uh, functions. So, you know, I'd mentioned NLP training large, um, based off of large bodies of data. So for this system, specifically ChatGPT um, on GPT 3.5 was trained um, through a snapshot of, of the internet. And uh, so, you know, Wikipedia, Twitter, um, all of the websites that you might frequent, GitHub, Stack Overflow, all of those systems were fed into this model to train it. So the answers that you're getting um, can be highly relevant based on, um, based on those inputs. And so I'll give you a couple examples here. Now, you know, I, at the end of this video, I'm also going to talk about some of the caveats and some of the limitations. This is a very new technology. Um, so, you know, please be aware of what you're inputting into it and, and also... Um, be cautious with some of the outputs. But, um, you know, with that said, the, the ability to understand context, I think, will, will make this tool a force multiplier for many in the industry. So here, for example, I have this blog post called A Beginner's Guide to ChatGPT. Uh, I wrote it with the help of ChatGPT a couple days ago. And here on your screen, you can see a couple examples of use cases that this might be relevant for. So email replies, being a, if someone asks you a question via email about how to do something, an example, um, I'm having trouble uh, setting up VPC peering between MongoDB Atlas and AWS. Examples like that you can feed in and, and get answers to. Uh, document generation being another one, so being able to, to generate 
uh, scripts or presentations or talk tracks or things like that based on the, the context that you give the system. Um, as another example, we'll, we'll talk about uh, that one here shortly. Data analysis, I think that this is you know, going to become more relevant as organizations adopt this. Uh, you can see a day where maybe they are um, uh, pulling in private data and they have a private ChatGPT instance that has you know, relevant data. So if you work at Microsoft, for example, you would be able to potentially search through internal only data um, with this uh, chat GPT, using it really as an assistant. Customer service, being able to quickly find answers uh, to different customer queries, and maybe even maybe even replacing some basic you know tier one customer service. Uh, if you've ever been to a website and you've kind of um, clicked on chat support, and you'll you'll notice that you're probably greeted by a bot. You ask it something, and it can kind of direct you. Well, this is this is much like that, but much much more advanced. Um, and then you know the list goes on. I will share the link to to this blog post in the description below. I will also share the link to ChatGPT, uh, which is openai.com uh, forward slash chat, uh, or I'm sorry, chat.openai.com forward slash chat. And then, so now what you see on your screen here is this uh, ChatGPT interface. Now, at the time of this video, ChatGPT is uh, free and open to everyone. You just go to their website, you create an account, it's a free account, uh, and then when you click ChatGPT, you will be greeted with this uh, chat interface. And so I'm gonna give you a couple examples here. And um, so, so I'm a solution architect. I, I recently started at AWS or Amazon Web Services, and I've been doing a lot of onboarding recently. So I'm kind of having to go through different knowledge bases, different articles to understand and learn various services, how they interoperate and things like that. And, um, you know, recently I, I did a lab or, or a workshop that was uh, creating an analytics data pipeline and it used various services. And through that workshop, I needed to create multiple resources in AWS and each of those resources I added a tag to so I could very easily delete them at the end of the course. It was something like a dozen or so resources. Um, now, rather than going through that manually, I wanted to just do it uh, more programmatically. So I, I wasn't sure how to do it. I did a quick Google search, you know, how to delete uh, AWS resources based on tags. Some of the answers I found weren't really that great. It took me a little bit of time and, um, and nothing was, was exactly kind of as relevant as I had hoped. So then I thought, you know, hey, let me come over here to ChatGPT and give this a try. So now at the bottom of the screen, you'll see I am typing in my query. So how to delete multiple AWS resources based on their tags. <clears throat> All right, and then now you'll see here that, um, that I'm given an answer, right? So this answer is telling me how to do it uh, via the command line interface. And uh, really this is you know, uh, a quick and accurate, you know, I went back and I checked this, uh, a quick and accurate response on how to do this. Um, and now let me, let me show you kind of one of the most valuable components of interacting with this, and that's through the use of follow-up questions. So, so the biggest thing here is not only can you ask ChatGPT questions, but you can also refine your questions and, and refine the outputs that it provides you. So this gave me the CLI, but maybe I wanted to do it um, through, through the user interface. Uh, so I'll say, how do I do this? How do I do this through the user interface? All right, and um, periodically, uh, it might take a little bit of time to load. Uh, I noticed that this has been getting very popular recently, and um, and there are a lot of people that are, are um, playing around with this. So now you'll see that uh, after I kind of calculated my input, uh, it is now giving me the way to do this through the management console. And again, you know, I went back and I cross-checked these, um, these answers. And for the most part, they are largely accurate. And then one final modification, I'll say how how about with a CloudFormation script? And then now this is going to generate a um, script output for me, a CloudFormation script. So the important thing to call out here is that uh, ChatGPT is actually generating 
this uh, this script net new. So it's not going elsewhere and um, and retrieving a, a a copy or you know doing a copy paste of something that it's found in, in some forum. It is actually generating something that new. And you know to add on to that, I'll show you another example. Say uh, generate a web page with search bar in Python. <clears throat> and then now we can see here that it is generating this. This is a, um, a Flask um, based program that is you know, doing exactly what we wanted. It's giving us a couple different uh, outputs here. And again, this is all net new. So, so one of the caveats that I'd mentioned earlier is that, you know, be careful with some of these outputs. I, I actually had it, you know, kind of build out an entire um, web interface for me the other day with multiple code files. And, and I had to do a good bit of work to actually uh, get it working. So there are things that, you know, it's not amazing at yet, and it's not fully reliable on. So, uh, I think the most important thing here to keep in mind as you're using this is play around with it. You know, use it as a force multiplier to um, to get you answers to to kind of stubborn problems that you might not be able to find. For example, if you're an engineer, uh, Stack Overflow can be uh, can be a bit of a haystack, so to speak. And um, you know, using this system can very much expedite your uh, your efforts. And also with that said too, uh, you can use this to debug your code. So if you had a snippet of code and that you wanted to put in here, um, I've seen some people recently, um, you know, assessing uh, smart contracts um, and, and kind of doing debugging through here with, um, with quite reliable results. And, um, but again, the, the thing to, to learn is that this is still fairly nascent and that there is, you know, a lot of work in progress going on. So using this as a force multiplier to expedite some of the work that you are doing and, and using it as a scaffold, really. So if you wanted to build a, a, a new web interface rather than having to code that from scratch, you can give some context in here to ChatGPT. It can kind of give you a, a scaffold um, or a rough outline that you can begin to use. And maybe it'll take you, you know, rather than six or seven hours to, to build your interface, it'll take you two to three. So this is very much something that can expedite your efforts. And it's not just on the engineering side. So I'm going to give you a couple other examples. I'm going to shift over to, um, to maybe something that is a little bit more business centric. So I'll start by saying uh, generate a business idea. Generate a software business idea in the healthcare space. <clears throat> All right, and then now it's telling us uh, here, you know, an idea to connect mental health therapists and counselors uh, with patients uh, or vice versa. And it kind of gives us a, a general idea here. And we can say, uh, please create a business plan for this idea with focus on product features. So again, this is what I was mentioning about being able to refine your, um, your outputs from the system. So, so the big thing here is, is not only can you use this to kind of generate things that are net new, but you can also feed something in and have it uh, expand on that for you. So as I had mentioned, I created this blog post the other day that was talking about a beginner's guide to chat GPT. And I use GPT to generate, uh, I would say about 70%, 70 to 80% of this content. So it gave me the framework. I fed in the idea of what I wanted. I wanted it to help give me some examples of um, use cases. And then I came in, I added some context, I added some screenshots um, and added a little bit more detail. And so here, you know, there, there is a, um, a character output limit, I believe. So what we can do is, you know, if it kind of gets down to the bottom and we want more, we can say continue and, um, and it'll kind of, you know, continue on where it left off. Again, you could say, hey, I want to refine this and add in another feature that allows users to, um, to book counselors through Outlook, uh, through email or something like that. So please add in a feature
All right. And uh, so there's, you know, just a little bit of an example. You can also do this. I've seen a lot of people kind of putting in ideas for, uh, for you know, scripts and screenplays or children's stories or say, you know, um, write a short story about James Bond and his dog touring Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. And uh, I can also uh, um, deal with uh, typos. So it is typo tolerant. Um, and generally speaking, it can usually uh, interpret what it is that, um, that you're wanting to input. And uh, so let's see. You know, with that said, I, I think that, um, you know, you probably get the idea here of, of the value of this tool. Uh, again, it's if you're trying to find something and you are um, maybe, tr you know, not sure where to look and you're not having great success with Google, you can use this. Uh, if you want to help it with some of your development or if you're having uh, technical problems, maybe you want it to, uh, to generate a tutorial about um, how to... Um, Let's see, how do I connect Atlas Sir, to AWS via PC peering? <clears throat> All right, and then uh, now it's giving me an output on this. I was also trying this with, uh, you know, with that data pipeline I mentioned, I was uh, connecting S3 to Redshift uh, using AWS Glue. I haven't really used Glue very much, and I found this incredibly helpful in that effort. So again, now, you know, uh, I would highly recommend that you go and play with this, but while you are doing that, please keep in mind some of the caveats and limitations. Again, since this is new and since this is public, uh, please be wary of the information that you are pulling from it. Um, you know, if you have a, a customer that you're trying to help with something that is, uh, that is very critical, I would not yet trust this to output uh, a code snippet or something that you then in turn share with that customer. I would also never uh, share anything that is sensitive with this. So if you have any private source code, any sensitive data like passwords or um, API keys, things like that, do not input those in the system. Um, be very, very careful. But, uh, but really, you know, this is going to be a tool that I think is going to um, really have a tremendous impact on the knowledge work industry and, and a lot of other um, sectors. And, and this, this is going to evolve quickly. So uh, I will post some links in the description below, but uh, please feel free to comment. Also, if you have any questions, and um, I'll potentially look into generating or uh, creating some new content that is ChatGPT specific in the near future. Uh, so that's all for now. Thanks for watching.